and welcome to Tech Tuesday. So today's Tech Tuesday came from um, a topic that had come up on one of the live feeds that I do. Uh, and it was um, mostly about the reducers and the additives that CreateX offers. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'd kind of give you the real simple rundown of how I use them. It can seem overwhelming when you look at the products that they have. They, they, it's an extremely versatile paint line. Um, it shares the same DNA across the board so that you can mix and match a lot of things, which on the outset will give you, um, you know, it, it may overwhelm you as you start to look at it, but I'm going to really simplify this for you so that it'll make it really straightforward on, on how to kind of navigate your way through this and what this stuff does. So there are three products that fall under additives and, um, and or actually only two, but really I'll group them into three um, that, that you have to kind of look at. There's the reducers that they offer, and these are simply products that will thin the paint out for you. Uh, so that's the first set. The second set are the clears that they offer. So the clears um, are what you would use to put on top of your artwork to protect it or to, you know, enhance it or just uh, kind of generally make it make it look finished. Um, the last thing are the, the additives, the pure additives. Now this group is why I kind of hesitated because this group is now kind of melting together. You can use the clears as additives and in a lot of cases they're actually taking the place of the additives. Um, and I'll explain that in a second. But let's start with reducers. So before I get into any of the reducers, um, there's an important thing that you can do as you're kind of looking at this stuff. If you get confused or even if you're not confused, and you want more information. If you go to any good company that sells products like this, chemical-like products, they will have uh, technical data sheets on, on file for you. Uh, and they're all on the website, usually. Createx is great. They update theirs all the time. So you just go to the um, website and grab the uh, TDS on, on whatever product you want to use. And what's nice about it is it gives you all the details and all the information about that product. Um, so everything from health and safety to how to mix it to you know what it's made with for the most part. Um, it's just a great source for information. And they update these all the time. So even if you download this, um, go frequently and re-download it in case there are any changes. Um, so that's, that's the most current information that they have. And that comes directly from from, from the company too. So you know you're not getting secondhand information. So that's number one. And there are TDS uh, on, on every product. I know Createx has uh, TDSs on everything that they, that they have in their lineup, which is, which is great. It's, it's great information. All right, so let's do the, um, let's do the reducer real quick. Um, really what it boils down to is, um, is each reducer does a little bit different kind of thing for your painting um, and all it takes is really finding the right reducer and then you're ready to run. So for me to make it simple all these reducers stay over here. I don't even use them. The number one reducer that I use is the 4011 reducer. It works across the board with every product that they make. It's just a for me it's it's an all-around great reducer. I don't need anything else. Um, I use this reducer for paintbrush work as well. Um, so it's the go-to uh, reducer for, from Createx for me, and um, even for them, they recommend it for a lot of their their um, their paint line. So uh, it's just kind of the the universal reducer. So to make it easy, try this one first. If this one works for you, you're golden. You can use it on anything, um, and in and in anything, you can use this with the illustration line, the Wicked line. You can even use it with the uh, straight up Createx line. It's just universal. So it's great reducer. They do offer some other reducers. Let me get this one out of the way first. 4012 is a reducer that they had had out for a while. Um, it's They don't offer it on the website. They don't show it on their website right now. So I have a feeling that this one is kind of on the way out. Um, so I'm gonna leave this one off the page. If you have this, you can certainly use it, uh, but it had a few quirky things that, that were trade-offs for what it did. So for the most part, you don't have to worry about 4012 at all. So that takes that one out of the loop. There are two others that they offer, uh, 4013, uh, and uh, 4013 uh, contains, its its main thing is, is isopropyl alcohol, so it dries very quickly. Um, and again, if you have a need for the paint to dry a little bit quicker, 4013 works great. The auto, automotive reducer has acetone in it, um, and what that does is it allows it to um, help the paint dry in really humid conditions. Again, unless you're finding that the 4011 
doesn't work for you, that you need something a little bit different, they offer these. But um, but for the most part, like I said, 4011 is the one I go with. So again, if you find the need to kind of bump it around and you want to try these, do it, um, as long as you know what's in them. Um, these obviously are flammable uh, when you have isopropyl alcohol or acetone. Um, they're not hazardous, but they do carry the, the little warning label because you want to be careful of them. So uh, they, are, they, they are what they are. So there you go. Again, uh, the TDS sheets will go over everything on these. Um, really, really simple. So there you go. So that's a reducer story. That's it. It's really simple. It seems like it's confusing when you have all these options that, that seemingly, you know, kind of blend together. But, um, but yeah, it's it's worth just kind of trying them out and uh, seeing what you think. But 4011, like I said, for me, does everything. I use this stuff across the board with everything. So there's your reducers. Okay, additives. Let's talk about those a little bit. I'm going to start with the UVLSs. The the uh, the clears that they offer because these now have become my only additive as well as uh, using it for a clear and I'll kind of give you a quick rundown on how I use them. Um, the king of all UVLS clear or well, actually let me explain this first. So the the only difference between everything I'm holding in my hand is the sheen of it when it is applied to a surface. That's it. It's the same product, but there's a matte additive, <clears throat> excuse me, added to this one, a satin additive added to this one, and nothing added to the gloss. So if you want a real matte finish, you would choose this one. If you want a satin finish, you would choose this one. And if you just want a glossy finish, this is the guy to go with. That being said, that's the only difference between them. This guy gets the most use for me across the board. Um, it has excellent adhesion. It's just a great all-around um, additive. Now, what you would use this for is if you want to add some transparency to the paint without changing the viscosity of it. This actually has a little bit heavier viscosity than most of the paints anyway, so it'll actually add a little bit of viscosity to it. But what it does is it, trans it makes the paint more transparent without reducing its ability to stick. So the one thing I do a lot is over reduce my paints. So I add a lot of reducer to it. So when I do that, I change its ability to stick. It won't stick as well anymore with a ton of reducer in it. So by adding some of this guy here, it just reintroduces that ability to stick and makes it more transparent and you can still have the thinness that you're looking for. So that's kind of how I use these guys in conjunction. And that's it. That's what I use it for. Um, occasionally I'll add it to a color. Um, you can add it to, say, the illustration line. The illustration line is a reworkable paint. It's designed to be um, reworkable for a little while before it totally cures. If you love the colors and illustration but really want that stuff to grab and, and be bulletproof from the start, you can add this to it. So again, just think, it adds strength, but it also adds transparency. So that's that's all you do with this stuff. Um, it does act as a clear too. It's not a automotive clear, like a two-part clear, but this is where the other two come into play for me. The satin is what I use on all the ampersand paneled boards, all those MDF board paintings that I do. I love the satin finish on, on as a final clear coat, and it's got UV stabilizers in it. Um, it's compatible with the paint, so it really melts into the paint. It becomes really part of the painting, but gives me that protective coating that I really want, and locks together all the sheen, too. <clears throat> now, matte... This one I've been using a lot as an intercoat clear. So as I'm working on a project like this guitar, where it's got a lot of stuff on it, I'm spending a lot of time on it, there's a good chance along the way that this will get damaged. The paint will kind of get nicked and scuffed as I'm kind of, you know, manipulating the guitar and doing other parts of it. So what I do occasionally is I'll mix up a, a real thin version of this mat, and sometimes I'll use a satin too, but mostly the mat. A real thin version of this, like one to one, again, 4011 reducer and the mat. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'll just spray that lightly over the, the finished parts of the painting. That gives it a little bit of a protective surface so that I can't really, I have to work hard to damage that now. So that's kind of how I use the mat. And that's it. Other than that, again, these three products are exactly the same. It's just which sheen you want. So it makes it really simple. All right. Finally, the bases. So with all of Createx's line, they offer a clear base for the paint that, that you're using. So if you're using Base Coat Sealer, 
there is a transparent base for that. <clears throat> if you're using illustration colors, there's a transparent illustration base as well. If you're using wicked colors, there's a transparent base for that, as well as the regular Createx colors, there's a transparent base for that. And all this is, is this product without color in it. So it's the Autoborn Sealer base without any pigment in it. And that's all it is. Uh, and the same thing with the Wicked and the illustration. So the reason why you'd use this is this will also tr make the paint more transparent, but it'll keep the paint's same characteristics, where the gloss will make it stronger and bulletproof. If you wanted to, say, thin out your illustration colors but still wanted them to be reworkable, then you just use their clear, the, the clear base for whatever line you're using. That's it. So, um, so really, that's it. I don't use them really that much at all because the gloss works so well across the board, but that's what these sealers do. And you can use them for different things as well. Um, they have a number of different uses because essentially they're clear paint, which makes them fun. Like I could use this Autoborn sealer as that same intercoat clear on this, um, but it's totally flexible and it's totally up to you. So that's kind of what these are. So for the most part, again, once you find that additive that you love and it does what you love, you can kind of stick with that. And you don't have to deal with, you know, every single additive that they offer. Okay, finally, the last one is 40-30 uh, Balance and Clear. This is like the, the grandfather of the clears for the new Wicked line and the Createx line. This is the first clear that they came out as, with as an additive. Um, what I've done is I used to use this a lot, but it was replaced for me by the, um, the, the UVLS Gloss. So they do exactly the same thing. This Balance and Clear adds a lot of strength to the paint, help, helps it adhere a little bit better. Um, um, and, and that's kind of how I was using it. I was using this to add that strength back to the paint. The gloss now took its place for me because I really love the way that this stuff aggressively adheres. And again, both of these are universal, so I can use this on everything. So to make, to kind of streamline my paint shelf, um, I replaced the 4030 with the 4050 and that's it. So that's, that's how that works. And that's the whole, that's the whole bang. That's everything. That's all you got. Um, so again, while it seems really confusing, it's really not. It's not that crazy. You have the additives or the basically the clears for, for the line, and then you have the reducers. And that's how it works. So it's a matter of just kind of homing in on the, the, the additive and the reducer that, you, that will really work the way you like. And, um, and that's it. So you don't have to have... I mean, you can certainly have them all. It's nice having the versatility. That's the beauty of the Createx line. You can literally fine tune your paint to do absolutely anything you want. Um, but really, if you're looking to simplify it, all you're going to need is one of each of these and you're ready to rock. So there you go. All right, so that is your Tech Tuesday. I hope this was helpful. If I missed anything or, or if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. I'm going to put links to uh, the Createx page so you can kind of check all this out on your own. And, uh, and that's what I got. So this is your Tech Tuesday. I'm Steve Leahy. Please don't forget to like and share this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. We have more Tech Tuesdays coming as well as time lapse and also uh, open studio videos. So for Steve Leahy and Tech Tuesday, I will catch you guys next time.